Support Wrestle Talk. Download the podcast. Hello and welcome to Wrestle Ramble. This is Luke Owen. I'm Ollie Davis, and today is a special news episode going up a whole day early for everyone, not just for Patreon backers, because Luke is getting married this weekend, and we're both to each other, and we're both going to be out of action getting married to each other, so we can't click the little button that says live on YouTube. You would think they would have a button that lets you do that automatically or from your phone, but it's very complicated and we can't do that. So we've had, we get, you get it all early and it's a news episode. So we'll be talking John Cena's Survivor Series plans potentially being leaked, Neville being cut from 205 Live and much more and crap gimmicks. Click the timestamps in the video description below to be taken right to those discussions or stay right here while I will say congratulations, Luke. Thank you very much, Oliver Davis. Thank you, SWAF Nation, that have got in touch to pass on there. Congratulations also, particularly to uh, the mayor of Painesville, who wrote me a lovely letter. Ah, oh, did he? he what, didn't... like a physical letter? It was Well, it, it sent us an email, but he wrote me a, a letter. An e-letter. Yes, but it was, it was absolutely lovely nonetheless, um, and part of which I'm actually going to include in my speech. Are you really? I was thinking, yes, I might do, yeah. You're going to quote. In all fairness, like, my speech is running very long as it is. It is. Uh, speaking of the difference between electronic and physical media, <laughs> what's this? <laughs> this right here is Wrestle Talk magazine. 48 full colour pages of brilliance. It just opened on mine and Luke's faces here in our Wrestling Road diaries. These have exclusive videos on barcodes that you can scan. Uh, when me and Luke went to the, uh, the place, the, the toy shop, and this is my favourite thing still, Twitter Wars, where you can relive Hiromo Takahashi's exchange with Will, Will Ospreay about uh, someone being a cat. <laughs> still don't understand it. But your wedding. Yes, uh, so uh, all very, very exciting. Um, everything's kind of said, I think. Obviously, I'm still here in the studio. I re- like My uh, wife-to-be is at her parents' house doing all the last-minute preparations, while I am here doing all of the wrestle talk last minute preparations before i go you've got your priorities i right. have got my priorities right yeah. absolutely yeah so i i think she's i actually she's very much not stressed anymore she's had a bit of a stressful week but like last night we had a glass of wine while watching the apprentice and we were just uh having a right old giggle about the whole thing and just talking about how much we're looking forward to it nice yeah i'm glad you are but what do you i mean there's of course there's gonna be tens tens of women who are hurt <laughs> because yeah. you you are going to be taken off the market. You are, of course, the heartthrob of this channel. Uh, is is that true? I don't think that is. I really don't think that's the case. Do you know where uh, to, to peel back the curtain? When I took on uh, Wrestle Talk when I first started on the YouTube channel here, it was ninety eight percent male audience yeah. in the YouTube analytics demographics, uh, and now it's ninety seven. <laughs> Who's bringing the ladies in? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm Rick Rude. I am effectively Rick Rude. <laughs> Ravishing Ollie yeah, Davis. Yeah, yeah. I haven't oh. checked actually since you've come on board. I imagine it would have yeah. You reckon? It's like two Rick Roods <laughs> sitting here in front of the camera. I don't know. Go by, judging by the comments of people asking me to shave my beard, I'm not sure that we are bringing, or at least I'm certainly not bringing mm. in a, a lady contingent into this. Well, shall we, uh, speaking of shaving your beard, that isn't going to be the punishment, but you have officially lost the October Wrestle Ramble battle. So that's yes. all the uh, the fantasy booking warfare things we've done, mm-hmm. the pay per view predictions, and the weekly Raw versus SmackDown battle. Of course, was the first of which was this week's when which it actually counted was. Yep. I went for SmackDown. You went for Raw. You won quite decisively. I think I only got like thirty eight percent of the votes for mm-hmm. Smack. The people who agreed with me for SmackDown decisively won with Raw. Obviously, I disagree. However, that wasn't the most controversial thing said on. Wednesday's episode, the most controversial thing was when people assumed that when I said Green Bay, Wisconsin was the home of that 70s show, that I literally meant Green Bay, Wisconsin. What I actually was referring to was that Wisconsin mm. was the home of that yeah, 70s people show. People were annoyed about Someone that. Someone called me the C word. Wow. <laughs> because well, I, you know, I said it wrong. <laughs> people like that 70s show. I like that 70s show. I think that 70s show is one of the finest American mm. sitcoms, specifically aimed towards teenagers. Apart from its dog awful last two seasons, I couldn't argue with that. I, I really is very good, and it holds up so because well. it's uh, it's occasionally repeated on TV these yeah. days. I've got them all on DVD. Oh, that's obsessive. <laughs> uh, of course, The Rock was in it. He played his he father. He does, yeah, and the Hardy and the Boys. Hardys, yeah. yeah. Uh, so obviously, some wrestling fans on the old 
on the old 70s show. That was back in the day when wrestlers were so in the mainstream that they could go onto a sitcom mm. and be like, oh my God, have you seen what wrestling star is going to be? And that's not wrestling fans being like, have you seen what wrestling star? That's the mainstream audience yeah. going like, that's The Rock. That's the wrestling guy, The Rock. Totally. totally. Whereas like Roman Reigns couldn't show up in an episode of The Big Bang Theory. Um, and people, John Cena could. John Cena and could. And he has on Parks and Recreation. Was he in an episode of Parks and Rec? Yeah, God, season I don't seven, uh, penultimate episode. I do not remember that whatsoever. I'm sure I liked it at the time, but I don't remember it uh, off the top it's of my head. It's the Johnny Karate Oh, that'd be special. why then. I really didn't like that episode. Um, but yeah, like, but like, if Roman Reigns showed up in an episode of Big Bang Theory, there wouldn't be like a whole load of people going like, oh my God, that's, that's, that's Roman Reigns. So I feel like you're trying to filibuster the fact that you need to do a punishment loop. Oh, well, actually, I, I wasn't. Have, I, I got off on a tangent about that 70s show, which I is a great have, show. I have done both punishments so far, so I'm going to take much delight in mutually agreeing a punishment for you. I yeah. can't just say something. I can't be like, <laughs> shave your beard off, Luke. Yeah. Uh, we've got to mutually agree on it. It's got to be something that I will put myself through as well. But feel free to put some suggestions in the comments below. And now we're going to do some crap gimmicks. <laughs> So before we started recording, Luke said to me, uh, "Good luck reading this one because there's no punctuation." So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump into. Are you, you going to read it as is? I'm going to do my best. So actually, there is one bit of punctuation right at the end. So the oh, a full stop. Yeah, <laughs> to know, to know we've ended rather than an absence of words. So this is from Funky Chicken Twenty on YouTube. Uh, so right here we go. Trademark Tom. He beats jobbers and trademarks their names, and his finisher is the unused is the unused which is a leg drop and his catchphrase is i'm going to live a trademark and he trademarks he trademarks pay-per-views however he doesn't trademark pay-per-views but he thinks he does when he comes out for his pay-per-view matches the titan tron led apron just says trademark on it this is this is confusing so the guy's what did gimmick, you get from it? Well, the guy's gimmick is that he uh, trademarks things. So he, mm. like, beats them. See, I, which is really weird, because, like, I, I I thought that the gimmick was that he would beat someone and then would, like, trademark their finisher. So, like, if he'd beaten The Rock, he would then say, I've now trademarked The Rock Bottom, which means you can't use it yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's and a that, good heel move. And then that's now his move, is yeah. The Rock Bottom. Yeah, and every time The Rock's going to... Or, let's not say The Rock. Like, this is mid-card, right? Yeah. So let's jason jordan so every time jason jordan is about to hit his finisher lawyers run down flanked by mr uh, tommy trademark or whatever he's trademark, trademark tom. tom uh that's pretty good actually that's yeah. that's sufficiently annoying yeah it is yeah unfortunately that's not what he's asked us but i feel like are we gonna sign our own <laughs> like thank you for the development work you did but hmm. we're signing our own our yeah. own gimmick because I, I also like the idea that he thinks he's trademark pay views but hasn't but still comes out thinking that he has so what does that mean i don't really know okay uh yeah they sign off with hope you like it or hate it so very confident <laughs> uh now freebird on youtube writes mr clean he comes into the ring while someone is cutting a promo and just starts cleaning the ring, mopping, spraying, dusting, etc. Then whoever was cutting the promo gets mad and the two of them have a match. During the match, if Mr. Clean hits someone, he leaves the ring to wash slash wipe his hands. Or if Mr. Clean gets hit in the face, he gets out the ring and starts wiping washing his face. However, the wrestler occasionally slips on mop water, cleaning spray, etc., which will cost him his match. After Mr. Clean wins a match, he grabs a bottle of hand sanitizer and makes the referee put some on before raising his hand. Mr. Clean's finisher is called the Clean Machine, for which he puts on doctor's gloves and mask. Sometimes Mr. Clean will start cleaning the ring when other wrestlers are having a match because they are making the ring dirty, which can distract one of them and cost them their match. So what is the... Fi I, I like the fact that he's got it, because that's awful that he's got to put on gloves and a mask for his finisher. Yeah. But what is the finisher? It's just got a name, the Clean Machine. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. I thought it was going to be an explanation of what that move was. Mm. However, one did not come. Um, but I do like a lot of this. I like the the constantly having to go outside the ring, the hand sanitizer that's stuff, washing face. Mm. It's very annoying. It's, it feels so uh, WWF superstars, like in 1995. Yeah, I can almost hear Jim Ross just being like, oh, first time seeing Mister Clean here today. Wow, this is a this is a crazy guy we've got right here." I I I, I kind of like it. What I really like is that uh, so I love it when wrestlers get out of the ring and stall for ages 
and they jaw jack with the crowd. Uh, we watched Halloween Havoc recently, and Bret Hart does that very well. Hulk Hogan doesn't. Randy Savage is very good at it, as was Bully Ray. I think he's the best in modern times. Uh, so if he has to keep on getting out of the of the ring, you know, he's just about to lock up. Maybe they lock up and he goes, ooh, yeah. you're sweaty. And he gets out of the ring and he washes his hands. I can genuinely see the crowd starting to go, boring, <laughs> boring. And I'm like, well, that's that's a crap gimmick. Yeah. That could be really bad. Especially then if he grabs the um, uh, the microphone and chants back at them, cleaning, cleaning. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, I like this. Yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah, um, no, I'm a big fan of Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean it is, but he, he, he won't wing clean. No. That, that'll be the heel irony. That, that's even better. He mm. wins dirty. Like it. So it feels like all of the news of the whole year happened last week. So much so, I had to record stuff from home. <laughs> I know, yeah, what a crazy Saturday you had. Davis doesn't work Saturdays. <laughs> I do. But... Saturdays are for Ring of, Honor, Ring of Honor and Pizza. Yeah, or New Japan and Cereal. <laughs> I like I like to pair, it's like a fine wine with cheese. Oh, well, you're, you're thinking about the uh, uh, the Evolve. May I recommend this sausage roll? <laughs> oh yeah, I'll go for a Cornish pasty and a bit of, I don't know, another... Uh, progress is on demand service. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. What's your WWE snack of choice? Uh, just sadness. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm usually making notes on WWE. Yeah. That's how I make notes. Yep. Like a T-Rex. Uh, I guess, well, no, NXT. Well, we just have lunch, don't we? Well, we so watch whatever NXT, I've got yeah. for lunch that day. Yeah, lunch and NXT. It's like, so wrestling, of course, this job is a dream job. Uh, not to toot our own horns, it's great. And we get to watch a lot of wrestling, but in, in so doing... WWE really has become sort of work. Mm -hmm. So I just treat that as I, when I watch WWE, when it's good, hey, hey, when it's not, it's work. Uh, but the the Ring of Honors, the New Japans, uh, the independent stuff, going to a Rev Pro show next week, mm -hmm. aren't we? Uh, that's like, because Rev Pro shows, beer. Beer is my <laughs> uh, accompanying thing. That's... um. That's how I treat it. Yeah. I suppose that, like that's my that's my hobby now. New Japan and Ring of Honor. I suppose it might, uh, I have a cup of tea <coughs> and Weetabix. Ooh, a Weetabix. Yeah, like a Weetabix, Weetabix. in the morning. I have three with some raisins. Uh, so and yes, almond milk. This this week wasn't as full of news, but there's still some knock-on effects from stuff. So the first piece is John Cena potentially being the special guest referee for. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal. So, what storyline could there possibly be to have John Cena come back mm. and referee Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar? I don't know. So, just to give a bit of background, Cena was originally advertised for Survivor Series. Brock Lesnar wasn't. Then Cena was removed, and then he was added again. And then he was removed. So there's a lot of confusion over the last three weeks. The last time he was removed, however, Brock Lesnar was added. And then the week after, it sort of broke. They're going to do Jinder versus Brock at Survivor Series with all the Raw versus SmackDown stuff. And then a couple of days after, that was confirmed. Pretty much when Jinder made the open challenge. Not mm -hmm. the open challenge, but the challenge. So it's... um, the, That bit happens... And now John Cena's still filming Transformers, mm -hmm. so I don't think he'll be around for much of the build. I, no. I I can see it just being, and the special guest referee is John Cena, and everyone's like, "Whoa!" And that's that's the story. Yeah, and it and just happens. And he won't be on TV for any of the build. He'll just, he'll turn, he'll up, just yeah. turn up there because, in the same way, I I don't read NXT spoilers, but I do know that uh, spoilers. Uh, spoiler warning. Spoiler room brawl. Three, two, one. Shawn Michaels is going to be the special guest referee of the Drew McIntyre Adam Cole match at NXT Takeover mm. Houston. Houston. Yeah, um, and I, but I don't know if Shawn Michaels is actually going to be in the in the Full Sail Arena at any point in the mm. build up because I don't read the spoilers, so I don't know. But it might be the similar thing there, where it's like he we've just announced him as special guest referee, and here he is. Yeah, because it's it's such a gimmick pay per view anyway. None of these matches really have stories. They're just... It's all built on Raw versus SmackDown, which is silly because historically, like you said in a, a last episode, it doesn't draw. Mm. It doesn't really make a difference. So this kind of fits in with the chuck everything against each other mentality. 
and and I guess seen as a free agent, maybe that's yeah. the only thing I can see working into this. Mm-hmm. Maybe it'll play into which who he favours might be the one he goes for on his return. Or actually, or what it could be used for is uh, Brock wins and then Jindy uses that as his ammunition to start his feud with Cena to lead into that sure. proposed Rumble match that they've been on the card for for some time. Or oh, heaven forbid wrestlemania match and they drag it out even further yeah yeah I, that's a, that's a that's a stretch i could certainly see them doing that or maybe cena turns heel <laughs> i mean it could happen yeah on reigns yeah somehow somehow uh or do you know cena cena does something yeah to, to either cost gender yeah it's gonna be that you're right i think yeah uh, i was well, to- and i'm saying just costing gender but because like brock just wins clean and then Jinder's just like, John Cena was, an, was a biased referee. He hates people from my country. Mm. He's just like all of you stupid Americans. Continue on that gimmick, USA. Pa- Captain America himself comes out to defend the uh, the country's mm. honor, waving the American flag. Oh my God. And that's what they'll use as the storyline ammunition. Because like, who personifies America more in WWE than Captain America himself? Mm. But he's Steve Rogers going there with his, with his jorts and his American shoes, mm-hmm. and his American salute, and his American rapping. It's going to be insufferably uh, American. nationalistic. Yeah. And then just like the Jinder Cena match. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's what they're going to play on. Of course mm. they are. Because and- uh, because Jinder's character has sort of come back from that with the Nakamura feud and now the Brock feud. They haven't really brought up the nationalistic elements. But I think Vince is. This is what it's all building to. This is what Vince has probably seen in his head. America, John Cena versus Indian Jinder Mahal. Way. Yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah. It, it all makes sense in the eyes of Vince McMahon. Mm. Off topic, um, but just sort of speaking of, of Drew and Sean, did you listen to Drew McIntyre on Talk Is Jericho? No. It's a very good interview, actually. But he was talking about how much he really enjoys Sean Michaels' class at. Um, at the performance center because mm. uh, that's like the la- one of the last things you do there is just learn from sh- from Shawn Michaels which would suggest that Drew's not destined for NXT for very long finishing touches but that's what it is yeah. and he said he goes I've learned so much he said I've only been back in N- I've only been in NXT for a short amount of time but the amount that I've learned from Shawn Michaels already is just like it's stuff that you would mm. never have thought of unless Shawn was there to tell you wow. so for example the moment um, it was leading into the match with him and Bobby Roode at um, uh, NXT Brooklyn 3 and the referee, uh, Sean Mike had always told him, just like, if you think you're down for too long, like if you're doing a double down, if you think you're down for too long, just stay there longer because the crowd will just get really amped up and will start to build a frenzy. And during that match, and I think if you go back and you can see it, the ref goes up and says, we've got to wrap this up. We've got to start to go home. And Drew said, no, we're not. Uh... We're, 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 going to stay, we're going to stay down for longer. And the crowd then start getting really amped up. Uh, before they finally go to get back to their feet for the uh, the final uh, final sequence. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And like you know, obviously Shawn Michaels is a huge part of that. But I love Drew uh, because that that's also him for being such a sponge and a student of the game and always yeah. wanting to improve himself, which is what he did when he left uh, when WWE released him and he just completely transformed himself. Well, good. Well done. Well Drew. done, Drew. Well I'm, a bi- done. I'm a big mark for Drew. Yeah, well, and that sounds patronising. We're gen- <laughs> like we're genuinely. Uh, yeah, he's awesome. Um, so the only other question I have on this story is uh, PW Insider said it's going to be John Cena. Dave Meltzer said John Cena's likely, but not a lock. The idea is they want someone in the ring with Brock and Jinder who will be intriguing with Brock. Mm. So uh, so Cena is the front runner, but, you know, other names, Undertaker, Goldberg. Hmm. I'm just, I'm just spit. Those are the two names that have been brought up the most. I'm just gonna spitball Triple H, Shane McMahon. Yeah, like I don't know. I, I, everyone kind of like it seems to be clamoring for an Undertaker return, but I'm quite happy to not have an Undertaker return, especially yeah. if it's gonna be for a, just being a special guest referee. Do you know who should never be a special guest referee? The Undertaker. Oh yeah, good point. Like that's that's a way to kill a gimmick is the Undertaker putting on a referee shirt. But it's it's Houston. It is, it, is, it is Houston, and I kind of get that, but like, I just don't think that fits The Undertaker. Mm. It's kind of the same with Goldberg. Like, I don't want to see Goldberg putting on a special guest referee shirt. Like, he's Goldberg. Yeah, year after. It's, it's, a, it's a lame return. Yeah, it's a very lame Unless return. it's going to build to something 
down the line, which I, I assume the Cena one would do. Yeah. I, I think CM Punk. I think CM Punk. <laughs> <should be. laughs> well, that's a lock, obviously. Daniel Bryan has again teased his in ring return. What's he done this time? Well, after Kurt Angle uh, came back, uh, w- when the first announcements were made, everyone was like, woohoo, Kurt's coming back. Yeah. Drew tweeted about the NXT tour bus. The NXT tour bus has just gone crazy about the news. Uh, Booker T nonsense. <laughs> and Daniel Bryan just tweets, interesting. Mm. And then on uh, after TLC, he tweets something to the effect of Kurt Angle was told he would never wrestle in WWE again, and he's just won a TLC match in the main event after 11 years out. Uh, and then hashtag, so you're saying there's a chance. Because mm. he's just got to, all he's got to do is just appease their doctor. Because mm. he's been signed off to wrestle by his own doctors, multiple doctors that he has spoken to. It's just Dr. Maroon that he can't get past. Mm. And And one specific lab in New York that found the lesion on his brain. Yes, and that so that if he can get past that that one doctor and that one test, then yeah, then he can wrestle again in a WWE ring. I don't I don't even think that though. I think even if they medically clear him, I think and rightly so, like I you know, if I was in an employing position or contracting whatever the the situation is, and I'm Vince McMahon do, you know and i you've people talk about batman and you know why is batman the way he is why does he keep these files on superman and he has like a kryptonite rocket that he can kill superman with if needs be it's because because he lives in a universe where people frequently get possessed or turn bad guy vince mcmahon's gone through a lot of stuff and he's had a lot of deaths and injuries and has a rocket launcher in and his. has a rocket launcher of kryptonite on through you know in his experience and then here's this guy there's the CTE concussion suit going on in the mm-hmm. background like maybe it's maybe medically it looks fine on paper but i can totally see the other side of the story where politically it's not the right move and maybe when it's someone's health when they've just had uh, when when daniel bryan's daughter like daughter is the what would you the niece of john cena mm-hmm. uh, soon when they get married uh, why why would you take that risk on someone's health so i can i can see both sides i'm not like wwe are evil for not letting brian wrestle i i think it's you know mm. i saw someone actually make a really interesting point just because you mentioned uh daniel bryan's daughter then that at um, wrestlemania 54 um or 55 we'll likely see birdie brian versus the daughter of the miz and maurice finally finishing off that feud that they'd started oh, 20 yeah. years ago <laughs> That is long-term booking. <laughs> wow. From the womb. Yeah, exactly. Long-term booking, booking, <laughs> booking from conception. Yep, that's absolutely right. That's why yeah. they timed it this way. Mm. That's how micromanaging WWE are. Yeah. It's like, God damn it, you're going to have a baby now. And then like injecting them with stuff to make sure mm. it's the right gender. Uh, Neville has been cut from the 205 Live intro. He's out the door. By the looks of it, like, and it's so. From what I've I've heard is that uh, I say I've heard, like, it makes it sound like I've got the inside track. I don't, um, but like from what I've read and what I've seen, it's basically now just like whether he can negotiate a deal to get it out of his contract, yeah, or he's gonna have to wait to sit it out. But do we know how long that is? I don't know. I I, I don't know anything about his contract length. I know he signed with NXT like in 2012. Yeah, it was been there for a while. Yeah, a long time ago. But when I was when Neville first walked out, I was sort of doing a bit of research, and when he, when I say research, I mean I looked at Wikipedia, mm-hmm. and he the last thing he did really before signing that contract, although he didn't debut until later on in the year, was the best of the Super Juniors tournament with New Japan. Mm. I bet he had a riot yeah. with that, and like 2012 and 2017 in New Japan Super Juniors. There's a difference because now you've got Osprey, Kushida, uh, I get Marty Skulls in the Super Juniors, I think, mm. as well. You know, just like some of the world's most exciting talents. Ricochet will be with WWE, it seems, by then. I was but, about uh, to say Ricochet, but yeah, I forgot mm. that he was on his way into the E. But um, Neville, yeah, Neville could be really, really good and I think make quite a good living for himself well, running it- the major. He is one of the promotions. exactly, and he's kind of one of those guys because the stories are uh, that um, it, it, it was the Cody Rhodes thing. That apparently, Cody Rhodes was getting a lot of calls from people inside WWE about 
what did you do mm. to make your make a name for yourself on the independence? Because for every Cody Rhodes, you've got a Jack Swagger, you've got a Ryback, you've got a, you've got all these lads who've left WWE being like, I'll be fine on the independence, and then make absolutely no money whatsoever. But Cody Rhodes, now one of the biggest stars in independent wrestling. He's Ring of Honor champion, he's with the Bullet Club, he's doing great stuff all over the world. So he's kind of like the template. Mm. And um, apparently that was all set up from Dave Meltzer. Because a lot of people, a lot of people inside WWE contacted Dave Meltzer and said, "How do I do it?" And he said, "Speak to Cody." Yeah, uh, I, d- I thought um, I didn't. I thought Meltzer said that wasn't the case. Oh, really? Yeah, Meltzer said uh, I haven't had that, but if they're going to Cody, that's a smart idea. Oh, okay. That's yeah. why. Okay, I'd, I'd heard the other side of that. Uh, but anywho, but I think like if you're Neville, Neville's the sort of guy that could go into that Cody position mm. because. He's so good, and he's already got like the contacts that he needs outside of of WWE from working all around the world. That he could just leave and be like, "Harit, I need some work." Like, and then he could, off he goes, and he can just go and work all this stuff. Mm. Will he join the the Bullet Club? Like, will he be their next member? It's uh, the Bullet Club have said a lot uh, over the last year period that there are only two people they would let in after Mark. But then they put Marty in, uh, so maybe that's not strictly true. But the only two people they're letting after, Cody or Adam Cole, I can't remember, and that's Hulk Hogan <laughs> or CM Punk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, that, like, Hulk Hogan in a Bullet Club t-shirt. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, because he just, like, I remember we were talking about... Hulk Hogan again, yeah. Like, so we were, uh, $5 plus backers will have already heard our Halloween Havoc uh, Patreon podcast. But we were talking about how, like, NWO was meant to be this whole new, different thing. And then Hulk, as soon as Hulk Hogan came on board right at the start, he just turned it into Hulk Hogan and friends and just cut regular Hulk Hogan promos. Mm. And it lost all of the meaning that it was meant to have. It really does show, though, uh, that the wrestlers, particularly more experienced wrestlers who get put into the cruiserweight division in WWE, do not like it. Because Neville has now left, and the idea of there being a glass ceiling seems to have played into it massively. Uh, and Austin Aries, who yeah. was the other sort of big time guy who was put into that division, it's it was weird because after the success of the Cruiserweight Classic last year, it seemed like such a good idea. Yeah, it really and did. We were all really behind it and excited for it. Although the positioning of the show after SmackDown seemed seemed baffling. Ill advised. Yeah, and Two O Five Live just wasn't a good name, and you've shackled yourself to always making it live now. But, but, it, um, but it is the most exciting era on mm, WWE TV. But it really hasn't worked. It's been a uh, disastrous failure. Um, and, yeah, I doubt it's made any difference at all. But it's a shame. It's a shame because I Neville's mean, brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I, I, aside from Neville, pretty much anyone who has been a part of 205 Live is less over now than when they were when they are in the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. And apart from Enzo. Apart from, well, yeah, but Enzo was a star when he came in. Yeah. But now he's hit that glass ceiling. Well, that's all we've got time for for today's show. We've got to go and get Luke married. Yeah. So click the videos that have just appeared over Luke's face to catch up with the latest Wrestle Ramble or Wrestle Talk news. Subscribe to this podcast on your chosen podcast provider and, of course, this YouTube channel. Support Wrestle Talk on Patreon and, of course, order issue one of the Wrestle Talk magazine. It's magnificent. This has been Luke Owen. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was Rambling.